for today's webinar. Um, we have one of our entrepreneurs in residence with us, Angie. So Angie, thanks for joining us. Um, Angie is an interpreter, translator, and entrepreneur um, in the Madison area. So we're excited to have you with us, Angie, uh, to share all about the finances and any advice that you have um, for those who are joining us. So today's webinar will be recorded. Um, and we encourage anybody to turn their cameras on if you're able to, uh, just so we can have a little interaction uh, with our participants throughout today's uh, session. So feel free to add any questions that you have in the chat if you have any, or at the end we will have time um, and you can just unmute yourself and ask questions that way as well. So with that, Angie, I'll hand it off to you to get started. Thank you so much, Kelsey, and work. welcome everyone. I'm happy that you're here. Um, like Kelsey mentioned, my name is Angie and I'm an entrepreneur in residence. I'm gonna uh, go ahead and share my screen here. All right, so can you see the presentation, the slides? Okay. Sounds good. So today uh, we're going to be talking about finances. So we're going to talk about from personal to business. And I want to thank the Entrepreneur Center um, at Madison College for putting on this webinar. It's really great that you are all here learning about this topic. I know sometimes it's not um, everyone's favorite, but I think that the way I'm presenting today, you're gonna come up with some ideas on how to make it more manageable. So our object objectives are gonna be, we're gonna try to help you start your business on the right foot. And this is all to avoid extra work later. Learn why personal finances need to be organized to set the stage for success in your business and then learn how to get your personal finances organized. So both the why and the how. Our main topics are going to be um, personal finances, business finances, and a little bit of accounting. So on personal finances, again, we're going to talk about why they're important, why we need to focus on that. If we're talking about opening businesses, uh, we're going to talk about our bank statements, some spreadsheets and budgeting, some apps that are out there to help you, and then um, credit scores. A lot of people um, know their number, but they don't really know where to start to get it better. And why is it important when you're thinking about businesses? And then savings for investing in the business. On the business finances, then we're going to talk about uh, why we need to pay attention to our business finances, the registration process with the state and the um, federal government. We're going to talk about bank accounts for our business, building our credit history and financing. And then at the end, we're going to touch a little bit on accounting. So why we have to have it, why it's important, and then talk about a couple of softwares that are out there to help you or like different options you can go with. Um, if you don't want to go with the software, then we have spreadsheets or an accountant. All right, so this is me, I'm Angie. I'm an interpreter in residence at Madison College. Like Kelsey mentioned, I am a Spanish interpreter and translator and I work um, throughout Dane County. And I'm also a business owner. And my idea for the businesses where they stem from wanting to help Spanish speaking employees connect with uh, employers. And I'm very passionate about helping everyone succeed. So that's part of the reason why I'm here I'm talking to you today. Uh, English is my second language. So a lot of times I may not have the right words or pronunciation, but I always um, do my best. So, um, and I try to always have a positive impact on everybody around me. So I'm hoping that today you can get at least um, learn one thing and apply it to your journey. So I don't know if anyone feels, you know, um, brave enough to share in the chat. I want to know, like, where in your 
business journey are you in your entrepreneurship journey? Are you just um, entertaining an idea? Do you already own a business? Um, I, I have, have you had businesses in the past that maybe didn't end up uh, working out for you? So if you want to throw in the chat, maybe so I can get a an idea of who's here. I know we're recording this session. Um, so just keep in mind like personal information that you don't want like identifiers or things like that. But other than that, if you can share just where in the process are you? All right, I have Shante. I'm thinking about owning a business. Great. So this is a, a good start being here learning about this stuff. Yeah, Elijah, I want to own a business in the future. Sophie's still in the dreaming phase. Great. Well, I think you are already taking steps to make that dream come true because you're here. So, all right, I have a couple more. Um, turning my hobby into a small business. That is awesome. And planning to start as more of a side hustle first. English was my second language too. <laughs> All about empowering the Latino community as well. Love. Oh, I love that. Thanks. Um, yeah, a lot of businesses start as side hustles and then they grow and grow and then they take up so much time and they're making you good money if you're doing it right that you end up just quitting your what we call the W-2 job and focusing on the businesses. Yeah, planning to start a business, great. So a lot of the things that we're gonna learn today are gonna be helpful for all of you. And it's being recorded so you can share it with others as well. And um, one of the things that I want to start talking about is, um, screen here it's um so why i'm here so sometimes we think about well why are we listening to angie and or why are people listening to me so i have two businesses um, one is called bird blanco lawn and snow and the other one is angie interpret translator um, they're not perfect they're small they're growing um, but I'm hoping that the things that I've learned um, that I'm going to share here are going to be helpful to you. Uh, Verde Blanco was founded last year in March, and we do mowing, trimming, blowing, fall cleanings in small landscaping projects. Um, the net profit this year is up 88%. And then for interpreter and translating, I started in January of 2022, although I have... Um, almost 15 years of experience as a Spanish interpreter, I didn't quite have my business um, registered until last year. And that definitely made a difference. Now I had about 75,000 net profit in 2022. And the services that I provide are Spanish interpretation and translation. So how did I get to where I am today? So I took the opportunities as they came. I was learning about the need for the connection between the Spanish speaking employees and employers and decided to open up Verde Blanco. And there was an opportunity that presented itself and then I took it, um, but I made a lot of mistakes one of the main mistakes I made was that I thought, oh, because we're moving a lot of money and, you know, people aren't getting paid and they have jobs and we're, we're getting our invoice paid, um, that we were successful. But that's not necessarily true. And I learned that later on because as money was coming in, it was coming right out. So it was all because I started the accounting that I then realized what things were not really working. So I learned the hard way, and I also did some good things um, that I will also share with you today, and one thing you guys are doing is being here and listening to this, because I wish that I would have taken a webinar like this in the past and not had to learn the hard way, because the longer it takes for you to get started with all this that we're going to talk about today, the harder it gets later. It's not impossible but it's just 
if you want a smoother ride when it comes to the finances, it's good to get started early. So why are our own personal finances important if we're talking about business? So this will make things easier in the long run. So if you have your personal finances under control, then it will make it easier for your business to be successful. And we'll talk about, um, we'll talk a little bit more about how that works. And then the financial institutions, such as banks, they need to trust you as a person because you're the one that's responsible for the business. So banks and financial institutions are going to look at your personal finances at the very minimum, your credit score to lend you money for the business at the beginning. So that's another big reason why you may have a a business that's going very well, but for you to scale it to the next phase, you need money from the bank. They're going to look at your finances, your personal finances too. So why does it make things easier? So if you get organized, you're going to know exactly how much your business needs to make to pay you. So you can take care of all the expenses you have and then focus on the business. And then it will make it more likely for you to get financing because of the uh, banks looking at your personal finances and also because you're going to get organized budget and have money saved aside for investment. So then how do we get this personal finances organized? So I have on this slide some easy steps to get started. So the first thing you should do is learn where is your money going? And how do we know that? Well, we can go to the bank statement. I don't know about you, but I would never pay attention to my bank statement in the past. I would get an email from the bank saying your statement's ready, or I would get something in the mail and I'm like, okay, I mean, I didn't really pay much attention to it until I started looking into my personal finances and took the bank statement and worked with it. So what I did was start highlighting the monthly expenses so you can take different color highlighters and go over. Okay, so this is a monthly expense, all right? This is my deposit, the different color from like your job, for example. And then other miscellaneous expenses, like you uh, have some expenses that are not fixed and they just happen sometimes and they're different amounts. So you can categorize those separately and then with all that information then you know you're gonna find out a lot you're gonna realize oh i spent a lot on you know going out for coffee or going to eat or maybe groceries were more this month so you're gonna learn about your spending habits by looking at all the transactions because they're all out there then what i recommend is that you create a spreadsheet and it's going to be for the month. And I can, I'm going to show you an example of one in a couple of slides later. But what you essentially do is you add the dates for the month and then who you're paying to and then how much. If you have credit cards, I would suggest that you add not only the payment you're making every month, but also how much do you owe at that time and find out the interest rate for the credit cards because we sometimes go to credit cards for many reasons you know we're spending maybe money we don't have at that moment and want to pay it off later uh, larger purchases and we're gonna want to divide them over time then it's important to know how much we're paying for interest on different cards because most people have more than one credit card and it's going to be important to know which ones are costing you more on interest so it might take a little bit more of um, digging deeper into your credit card 
um, balance, uh, I'm sorry, statement. So you can see what the interest rates are. And then I would highly suggest that you download an app. Um, there are apps that are available out there to help you and they're really handy because you connect your banks, your bank accounts to the app. You can also connect your credit cards. You can connect loans like vehicle loans, mortgages, a lot of uh, connections can be made with those apps and then you're going to get a lot of information and reports so I would highly recommend that but I understand some people don't feel comfortable connecting or they they don't like technology so you can still use the spreadsheet if that's the route you want to go it's just that the apps are pretty nice because they're visually um, you know better to read and it's easier some of the apps are very low maintenance, so you don't have to constantly be there adding things. It's more like just making sure everything's categorized correctly. And then uh, the other thing that you can do uh, with the apps is check your credit score. A lot of times the banks have been doing that and they have uh, an option for you to uh, see your credit score. Um, but then there are other apps that can help with that and give you more information about where your credit stands, not only the credit score, but what type of payments are you making and what um, uh, accounts you have opened, all those sorts of things that will help you make better decisions. All right, I see there's a chat. What apps do you recommend? That's a great question, Veronica. So I have another slide here with that. Um, so I'll tell you in a moment, but let's look at, uh, at the bank statement first. This is what I was referring to. So this is just a sample that I got off of the internet. Um, so this is what I'm talking about. You look at every single transaction and then you start highlighting the ones that are like fixed expenses. So here I have like the MasterCards, um, American Express, Visa, and then I have the insurance. So that I highlighted yellow, then you could get a paying highlighter and then highlight your deposit. So payroll deposit. And then you have a visual. You're going to look at your statement and you're going to see your colors and see, okay, so this is how much I'm spending on uh, fixed expenses like rent, mortgage, car payment, credit card payments. And then this is how much I'm spending on the other stuff that's not fixed, like going out to Starbucks, um, shopping other things like that because then you're gonna use that information to do your budgets uh, george says he uses Simpower uh, app you know, a great way to consolidate your financial picture in real time great thank you for sharing um here's a sample of the spreadsheet um so it's just very basic you put the date who you're paying it to under the notes i write what it's for and then how much and then for the credit cards, I added those two extra columns, the one that says balance, and then the interest rate. And this is so you can get the information to make your decisions of where you're going to concentrate um, to get things organized and back into shape. So there are some expenses that there's not much we can do about it. So the mortgage, it's in this example, is 1800 It's going to be 1800 for who knows how many years you have left for example or your rent is locked in for maybe a lease and of a year you're always going to be paying that right so then the other expenses that are not in here would be those not fixed which would be like the groceries or going out to eat going out for coffee etc So here are the apps. So um, there's uh, my favorite is Mint. I haven't tried many of them. I only tried uh, Rocket Money, um, but Rocket Money, I didn't like their free version as much as I like the free version of Mint. Um, there are some that are paid, like Rocket Money, you can pay and get more services. Mint, you can pay to not get ads um, and it's not that expensive but you can always use the free version and just um, see the ads but there's not um, a lot of 
of difference. And I put in a link here for the a blog where they compare all the different apps and the good things about them and maybe not so good things about them. And then you can decide which one you like best. And, you know, just like I did trying a couple, see which one you like better. I had Mint for the longest time. Then I went to Rocket Money. Then I went back to Mint. It, it really, uh, you can still try and they have free trials. A lot of them, of the uh, a lot of the paid ones, you can do a free trial. If you don't like it, you can just discontinue it, um, close your account, and then you don't have to pay. Um, so you can try that just to get a, a picture um, how things are going for your finances. So that's um, then I guess your the answer to your question. That's the one that I I personally recommend, but it's not the only one so that's why I put the link on there just so you can make your own decision based on your own needs Oop. all right and then about the credit score so mint also shows you the your credit score you can see a lot of things about your credit score but I personally like credit karma I've had um good interactions with Credit Karma. They have given good advice. I can see a lot of things. They are trying to sell you things. So you will see on there, like you can save if you open up this loan or you can save if you consolidate your credit cards on here. But I would say just don't look at those suggestions as, as much. Just look at what how you're doing. So you're um, history and your percentage of debt, your percentage, you know, how much you're using from the credit cards. If do you have it maxed out? Those things. It's like more of like getting information instead of like getting into their offers. Um, but the reason why the credit card is credit score is important is because it's a reflection of your financial habits. It's just this weird formula where those um, credit Companies look at your on-time payments, how much of your credit balance are you using at one time, um, if you had uh, any missed payments, if you have too many accounts opened, if people are checking your credit too much. So all that goes into this formula and then it comes out with a number. And, you know, it ranges most of the time between like 650 and like 800 or so. So the higher the credit score number, the better. Um, but it it does take time for things to change. So that's why starting soon and looking at what's important for that number, um, it's better. So this helps you save money in the long run because if you have a good credit score, then you're going to be getting uh, better interest rates on then borrowing money. So there are a couple of ways to fix your credit score if it's not in great shape. And, you know, after you've looked at your finances, you're going to do the spreadsheet. You're going to see how much you're spending that's fixed, how much is not fixed. Then you can start budgeting about how much you can put down for paying down debt. Um, if you had the Mint app, you can set a goal on there to tell you, you know, I want to start paying off um, 300 towards a debt. Then you can set up a budget within Mint and then it will help you and it will tell you how you're doing, um, getting towards your goal. But um, there's a couple of things that can help with that. So one is I would say always have the auto pay set up so you don't miss payments. And you can set that up as a, the minimum payment. And then you can always go in and make extra payments later. But at least you know you're covered if you were to... Uh, you know, forget, then you know the auto pay is going to take care of your minimum payment. Because if you 
don't do don't make your minimum payment then you get uh, penalties you get some fees for the late payments and in addition to that that gets reported reported to your credit score so it will affect your credit score it will make it go down not a lot but the more that they're there um, the worse so i would say always set it up on auto pay um, it may happen that if you forget or you changed your account and forgot to change or update your auto pay, it may happen, but you can still contact your credit card company and ask them if they can please remove that, that it was an honest mistake. They will, they have limits. They can do it like maybe once or twice, give you your money back and then hopefully not like remove it from the report so it doesn't go against your credit history. But that's why another, that's another reason why watching your uh, personal finances is good because you're going to find out if that happened. Um, I, with the, the setup of the auto pay and all that, I have kept all the credit cards paid at least at the minimum. And then another thing to keep in mind is that if you have credit cards and you hate them because now, you know, you have them and you want to use them, so you're better off not having them and you pay it off and you want to close it, I would say it's better to keep the credit cards open because one of the things that affects your credit score is how much borrowing power you have so if you have a good size um, limit on your um, credit card and you're not using it as much that's good even if you're not using that credit card just having it open will help you with that um, overall usage so i would say don't close the credit card if you want you can shred it you can put it away not use it erase it from your history, but don't close it. And then um, another thing you can do to work with that um, rate of how much you have available versus how much you're using is you can uh, contact the credit card companies and get bigger credit limits. So if you've been really good, you've been using it, if you've been paying it off and you've been with the credit card company for a while, you can connect with them and ask them for an increase and see if they will give you more because that will instantly um, make your credit score, score go up just by making that bigger. But again, not using it, just having it um, higher. And then to uh, pay down the credit cards, there are, I would say, two main ways of doing it. And one, the, the reason why I have that snowball on the slide is because one of the strategies is called the snowball effect. So it's looking at all your credit cards, see what the balances are, finding out which one has the smallest balance. So on the bars here, I have, you know, a MasterCard that you know, let's say we have a $4,000 limit and we're using a thousand of that. That's the balance that we have. And then we have 3000 available. That's just an example. And it has a 25% interest rate. Then I have a visa that I have 5,000 available and then 500 being used and it's got a 14% interest rate. And then I put an American Express, 8,000 available, 300 being used, and 11%. Those were just numbers I threw out there. But the idea is that with the snowball effect, you will take the one that you owe the least to and concentrate on that one. So for all the other ones, you just pay the minimum. Doesn't matter how much the interest rate is, doesn't matter how much you owe, but you're gonna concentrate on paying off the one with the smallest balance. So in this case, you know, you could pay off like the American Express. 
you pay off those three hundred dollars and then you're done with that one so that feels like a big win because you could you know completely get rid of that debt and put away that credit card not use it anymore or um you know and once you pay that you can then continue with the next one on and the next one on and that way you start getting those big wins faster i'm sorry those small wins but they're faster because they're smaller balances the other um strategy that's very common out there too is looking at the interest rates so if you are okay taking longer to achieve that goal you know it's going to be a bigger win on the long run because you're going to pay off the one that you owe the most perhaps or you know it might be in the middle or whatever but you're going to focus on the interest rate so whichever card has the higher interest rate concentrate on paying that one all the other ones pay the minimum the one with the higher interest rate pay that one off and that way you will save money because you're going to save on interest if you have two cards that are about the same on everything except the interest rate i would say then pay the one with the higher interest rate first sometimes we don't even know what our interest rate is so that's why when we're looking at our spreadsheet earlier, we would write down what our interest rate is for that credit card. And then once you get rid of all those extra monies that you're spending on interest because you have you don't have things organized, then you start saving to invest. And this is what's going to help you with your business and making it bigger. So we're gonna start talking about our business finances. So with our business finances, you know, the way I see it is when you do your personal finances first, you're doing like a mini practice for what's going to be your business finances. So if you get good at your personal finances, you have, uh, you get a hold of what's going on, you're in the know, then it's gonna be easier for you to do your business finances because you're gonna to need to know how your business is doing to make better decisions. And that will make your business grow faster. It could even mean um, make the difference between the business being successful and the business closing. Because once you get to tax season, if you haven't been paying attention to your finances, you may end up with a huge debt and then have to close the business. So the first thing I wanted to let you know about businesses is since a lot of you have been entertaining the idea of opening a business is um, research and learn about what type of business structure would be good for you. There are different business structures out there. Um, the ones that I have are both limited liability companies, but there's also other factors that go into what would be the best structure for you. Um, there are co-ops, there are corporations, there are multi-partner uh, LLCs. So I put in a link in here where you can go and learn more about what types of business structures are out there and what would be best for your particular case. So then how do we get started with the business? So I would say, you know, a lot of people start with the business kind of informally and then move on to registering. I would say the sooner you get it registered, the better it's going to be to separate your business from your personal finances. So the easier it's going to be for you to know how your business is doing. And to be able to do that, to be able to have an account for your business, the 
bank is going to ask you for an employee or identification number. So that means you need to register your business with the federal government to get that number so you can go to the bank and get your accounts open for the business. So I have the links here of where you would go and register your business. So once you've decided which structure of business works best for you, and then you've decided on a name for your business. Um, by the way, with the names, um, there's uh, some tips we could talk about out, you know, outside of today's webinar. But once you've decided the structure and the name of your business, then you can go in and register them. And registering the business is actually not that hard or expensive. So registering it with the IRS is free. You go to the uh, link that I uh, listed here, and then you answer the, the questions on the form, submit it, and you basically get an employer identification number right away. Or it gets mailed to you if you prefer mail. And then for Wisconsin, you go to the link I have on here, same thing, you answer some questions, um, it, tells you in there you're going to need the name you're going to need who's going to be the officer for the business and then type all that in and you will get your business registered with the state as well um, and this is just kind of formalizing the business and you can start this um, even if you haven't opened the door yet for the business but just to get it um, started as an entity as a financial entity. So it's uh, with the Wisconsin Department of Revenue and the Internal Revenue Service. Oh, and on this slide, I also want to mention, if you are students, the, the state usually charges $130 or so for registering the business. But if you're a student, you can send an additional form that's also listed on that link. And you send it and they give you a huge discount on what it will cost you to register your business. So if you're students, you can take advantage of that. All right, so then once you have your employer identification number, which is just basically like a social security number, but for the business. So it's just so the IRS can identify your business and that's what the banks use. Um, uh, also, you can get an employer identification number even if you don't have a social security number. So if you have a ITIN, I-T-I-N, um, with the IRS, you can use that to register your business. So once you have that, then you can start opening the accounts for your business. So one of the things that I learned, which was contrary to what I thought about in the beginning, was having several accounts makes it easier to manage the transactions. I always thought one account was easier because you have everything like under one. But no, if you have several accounts, it just becomes so easy to reconcile that I would suggest that you open more than one. So you can have one, for example, one for income. So that's where you get all your deposits from your customers. Um, you can have one for savings, for like tax time, or if you want to use it to put the money uh, in there to then pay yourself. Um, that you can have one for payroll if you have employees and then you have another one for expenses um and then it's good to have a credit card for the business and um this makes it easier too to spot when things are odd like if you have your account for income and then all of a sudden money goes out from that account then it's easier for you to spot because there shouldn't be any expenses going out of that account. So then you can dispute that or find out what happened. And then why is building credit history important? Well, it's because obviously the financial institutions are gonna look at your history to see you know, who you are, what your financial habits are, and how are you gonna manage your business's finances? How is your business doing? 
they're going to ask you for statements like um, a sheet where, or a report where you have like net profits or profits and losses. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in their accounting, but it will make it so much easier to get the financing um, because um, when you get finances, the good thing about that is that it just it's not just you and your savings. It will be you and the money from the financing um, to help you make essentially more money. So a couple of things that I learned about financing that maybe I um, didn't know when I was starting. And then also I know that a lot of people that are thinking about businesses don't realize this. So one of the things was they would look at your personal finances. And the other thing was that you are going to need to put down from your own money about 20% of what you need. So there are many opportunities in Dane County um, and in the Madison area for startups. Um, so you can take advantage of those, get connections, um, get help, get um, grants, things like that. Um, once you work more on your idea, um, we can get you connected with some of those resources. Um, uh, me or another entrepreneur in residence can help. Um, but it's good to know that you will have to put down that 20%. So an example I have on here is if you need to borrow 50000 for your business, then the financial institution is going to ask you to put 10000 and they're going to finance the other 40000 And that's kind of a wall or like a barrier that a lot of people get to and they didn't know that that was going to happen. So they have this great idea and they want to get started, don't have any savings and then they go and it's like, oh yeah, your idea is great. We think it's going to work. We'd love for you to do it. Okay, now put 20% and we'll give you the other 80%. So, and then the person just says, oh, I don't have anything. So then you have to wait. So that's another big thing to consider in your budget is start saving for that. And then I mentioned earlier that losses and profit report said so that will come out of the accounting from your business. So you can do your accounting different ways, but um, you know, I there's some things that I suggest doing. So why is that important? Um, why are why is accounting important? Because you will save money if you do things right from the beginning, you will save time and money. You can avoid paying fees and penalties for underpaying taxes or for late filings. Um, it doesn't really take as much time as you may think. If you just dedicate 10, 15 minutes a day, you will stay in good shape. If you let time go, it will be harder to catch up, like I mentioned at the beginning. Not impossible, but it's harder. And then you will know the information that you need to make business decisions. Um, can we hire this other person? Does it make sense? Um, should we charge more for this service? Does it make sense? You need your reports to make better decisions. You can make decisions on the fly, but then you're taking more risk than if you base it off actual information data. And then it would also free you up to invest, invest your time, energy, and money on growing your business. Um, if you have things automated, it's much easier. So that's um, a question I have here is uh, numbers are not your thing. You don't have time for it. Then that's not a problem. You know, a lot of you mentioned that you have a dream, you have a business idea. So you are the visionary. You are the one that has the dreams and ideas. So you can get help with the numbers. It doesn't have to be you. You need to know some things, obviously, but it, you're not alone. You don't have to do it alone. And sometimes it makes more sense to have someone else do it and then trying to do it yourself and spending all this time um, on it when you're not doing it right. 
So a good start, and this is one of the things I was like, oh gosh, I'm so glad I did that. <laughs> and I would have been, I've actually seen uh, business owners that haven't done it from the beginning and they struggle um, when it comes time for taxes. Um, and it was starting with an accounting software. So I personally use both of these. Um, the QuickBooks is what I use for the two businesses that I talked to you earlier. And then um, my mom also owns a business and she um, signed up for WAVE and I helped her with that. And I liked it. It's, I would say it's just as good as QuickBooks. Um, I guess QuickBooks is more popular and it may have some more uh, like tiers for you to go up and up in your business. Like you can use it with business much larger, uh, but Wave is, is just as good and it's free if you use it with uh, just one person uses it, like one login basically. And this is an example, just a screenshot of what QuickBooks looks like. So you can see like this would be much easier to manage than a spreadsheet. You can always do it with a spreadsheet, but the software is just designed to help you and make things easier for you. You can automate a lot of things. You can say, okay, all the transactions that are coming from the hardware store, all those are going to be job supplies. You set up that rule and then it, boom, it gets categorized immediately. You don't even have to go and do anything. You can always set it up to have it you confirming all of those, but the, the software is there to help you. And then I mentioned, you know, other options. Of course, you can do the spreadsheets. It's free. Um, and you can get everything accomplished with a spreadsheet, but just if you're not familiar with spreadsheets and formulas and how those work, then you may need help from someone to create the initial template. Um, but once you have the template, you can basically just input the numbers yourself and then um, get your reports, but it's not as automatic as the software, so it takes more time and you're going to learn as time goes on that your time is valuable and it means money so sometimes it makes sense to pay for something um then to try to do it yourself and, and in paying someone i also added on here um, the help from an accountant so obviously it's gonna cost more but they can take care of more complex tasks like journal entries or filing your taxes one thing that I've seen happen like for interpreters, like I've I've paid an accountant now for a few years to do my taxes because when I didn't have the interpreting income, all I would do is get a W-2 and I would use like the free TurboTax and that was not an issue. But then when I went on TurboTax and I tried to use my 1099s and then I had a 1099 from this place and a 1099 from this other place, plus a W-2, then, the software started like adding up more money to what I had to pay. And at the end of the day, it would cost me the same to basically sit and do it myself with the software than paying someone to help me, um, someone who actually um, has gone to school to learn how to do this instead of me trying to figure out with the software. Plus, if you do that, and that is money that you're spending in the business, you will get to present that on taxes and deduct that as an expense. So if you think about it, it's it's just the business paying for itself. So in summary, um, personal finances, um, getting them organized, it's gonna be good practice for you, um, for what will come when you have your business. It will help you understand better what you need to get from the business in order to work in the business and on the business. So that means, you know, in, in it, doing the day-to-day -day things, but then also look at more strategy, how to grow the business, networking, other things that are not necessarily in the business. And um, one of the main things to know is after you organize your personal finances, you're going to know how much you need to get as a salary. 
because a lot of times we work and work and work and work in the business and we don't get paid and that's not sustainable so you need to know how much the business needs to pay you to be able to concentrate and working on the business and then uh, once your business starts um, then you will transfer all the knowledge that you got from practicing from your personal finances and then now you're going to apply it in a larger more complex scale and then oh, and then accounting um, you know in summary it's just it's not as overwhelming as it may seem right now um, and then you don't have to do it alone spending time and money in accounting pays for itself I've seen business owners that they are they end up with a lot of penalties and fees that they might as well just pay an accountant and get things done right instead of giving all that money away basically for fees and penalties. So something to consider there. So I would like for you to just do a quick reflection if you can please write down one thing you will do after today's webinar that will help you move um, forward with your goal. So if you wanna share on the chat. Oh, I got a note here from Amal that it's free to register for students. Yep, I know it was a, a big discount, but I guess it's um, free. All right, maybe work on my credit score for now. Yeah, I've been doing some research on all this. Um, I think we're going to be able to send you the slides so you can click on some of the links here or look at the names and then you can uh, look it up. Uh, if I have more questions or want to connect with you after this webinar, how can I do that? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I will share my email too. So you can email me or I guess Kelsey, if they should they email the entrepreneurship center and then you distribute the questions or they can email you directly. So I have okay. a follow-up email as you were going uh, through the slides today. I um, took some of the links that you had in there and have those directly in the follow-up email that the recording will be included with. Um, so I will send that out. So if anybody has any questions or wants to connect to Angie, I'll look for that email later this afternoon and it will have her uh, email right in there. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, feel free to um, send me um, an email. I see some great ideas here. Yep, credit score, that's a big one. And like I said, that they're going to look at that. So it's good that you're thinking about getting started with it. QuickBooks are wave, perfect. Um, are there any webinars for beginners already in business that need help sorting things out? Um, I know that we have some uh, meetings and some help available at the Center for Entrepreneurships. So if you want to send an email, we can maybe talk a little bit more about how we can be of assistance with that. It's for Ria. And then thank you very much for the detailed overview. I will review my bank statement and address it monthly. Yep, once you do it once, the first time it's going to take you a little bit more time. But uh, once you start getting a hold and, you know, managing your uh, finances better, it's going to get easier. The next time you look at the bank statement, you're going to know exactly what you spend money on and how much and why and all that. Okay, very helpful. Thanks for making the time. Uh, thank you for being here. I'm just going to add in one thing here, Saria. I am going to um, just comment on your uh, question. I will include a link to our recorded webinars from the past. Um, there's some really good information on there um, and some other past webinars that we've had. And you will also be added to our future webinar um, distribution list. So, but if if you want to reach out to us, like Angie mentioned, uh, to set up an appointment with one of our entrepreneurs and residents, you can do that by emailing the Entrepreneurship Center. Um, but like I said, for now, I'm going to send you a reply with the link to our YouTube channel that has other recorded webinars. 
All right, any funding opportunities in Madison for startups? All right, so um, yes, there are opportunities in Madison. Uh, um, sometimes it depends on what kind of business you're gonna open. Um, there are things out there that will help. Um, you know, I just recently heard like for Dakers in the Madison area, there's um, grants out there that are giving out like $10,000 a year to help with the business. Um, there's um, a lot of money um, available for co-ops. Co-ops are kind of like gaining uh, traction um, and there's um, help for like minority owned businesses uh, female women owned businesses um, so we have resources so if you want to send us an email we can connect there's also a uh, medicine college challenge in the spring where you can get an opportunity to win uh, some prices um, for some money to help you with their business in addition to meeting with an entrepreneur in residence uh, for uh, a few weeks to help you with your business. Oh, yeah, and then Kelsey linked in the chat the, the information for the Madison College um, challenge if you're a Madison College student. Um, but if you're not a student, us entrepreneur in residence, we, we help anyone in the community, um, not only students, but the challenges for students. Right. Yep, you're welcome. All right. Thank you, Angie. Um, it looks like a lot of valuable information was taken from this today. A lot of people have, you know, want to start up their businesses. So this was really um, valuable information for them. Uh, so like we said, if you have any questions or want any follow-up, um, have any follow-up questions, I want to reach out to Angie. I will be sending her email in the follow-up email with um, a link to the webinar as well as um, some of the links that she shared throughout today's um, session. So if there are no other questions, we can wrap it up. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Thanks, Angie. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye-bye.